Welcome to CatholicRadioDramas.com, presenting The Flames of Faith. I'm Patrick O'Neill, your host, bringing you a series of video casts on the lives and written works of the saints. This series includes over 100 audio and video presentations, and in these programs you'll discover classic sermons and commentaries of the great theologians and philosophers, mystics, and doctors of the Church. They'll include also the early Church Fathers, the Holy Pontiffs, and the great orators of the Church, whose writings and sermons have been collected and treasured over the past 2,000 years of Church history. So stay with us. Coming up, St. Alred's unusual take on the rift between King Saul and David. And we'll be right back. We're back, and today we're going to hear a dramatic story written in the 12th century by a Cistercian monk. His name is St. Alred, and his story, True and Eternal Friendship, tells of the friendship between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel, and the whole story is found in the Bible in the chapter 18 of the first book of Kings. Alred's commentary, narrated here for us by Frank Dugan, reveals Allred's deep knowledge of sacred scripture, and it also reveals some of the profound lessons he found there. Although written some 900 years ago, Allred's piece reads like a modern radio script and needs no editing. His story captures the drama and intrigue underlying the rift between King Saul and David, destined to be the next king of Israel. Saul fears the loss of his realm to David and becomes obsessed with jealousy and fear as he sees the Israelites praising David for his many conquests in the service of the king. The faith, trust, and loyalty between David and Jonathan contrast the sinister plots laid out by Saul, and in all Red Story, these play out with all the elements of a modern-day bestseller. What you're about to hear comes straight from the pen of Allred, who's not only a canonized saint, but a master writer as well. True, Perfect, and Eternal Friendship From a Treatise on Spiritual Friendship By St. Allred Abbott Jonathan, outstanding among all young men, took no heed of his royal lineage or his hope of the throne, but allied himself with David the servant and made him his equal in friendship before the Lord. The king had made David a fugitive, forced him to hide in the desert, and condemned him to death. And yet Jonathan preferred David to himself exalting in him, humbling himself. You, he said, will be king, and I will follow after you. What a splendid picture of true friendship. What an astonishing situation. He was the king, raging against his servant, and stirring up the whole country as if David were aiming at the crown. He accuses the priests of treason and puts them to death on a mere suspicion. He combs and searches woods and valleys, besieges the mountains and rocky crags with troops, and every man, man is sworn to wreak vengeance upon the source of the king's indignation. Only Jonathan, who alone should have had greater cause for envy, thought it right to resist his father. Putting himself to the service of his friend, he offered help and advice in his time of need. Jonathan set friendship above a kingdom. You are to be a king, he said, and I will be second to you. And still the father tried to incite his son to envy David. 
he covered him with abuse and frightened him by threatening to deprive him of the kingdom and strip him of his rank. Even when the king pronounced sentence of death upon David, Jonathan still did not desert his friend. Why should David die? How has he sinned? What has he done? When he risked his life and killed the Philistine, you rejoiced. Why then should he die? So maddened was the king at these words that he tried to pin Jonathan to the wall with his spear, heaping upon him further abuse and threats. Bastard son of a wayward woman, he screamed, I know well that to your undoing and that of your shameful mothers you love him. With this he spewed forth the full measure of his venom over Jonathan and uttered the words that were his final attempt to arouse bitter envy and jealous ambition. As long as the son of Jesse lives, your kingdom shall never be established. Who would not be moved to envy by these words? Whose love, whose favor, whose abiding friendship would not be corrupted, weakened, and destroyed by such an utterance. But in his great love, this young man kept faith with his friend. He was steadfast in the face of threats, unmoved by insults. Forgetting renown, he thought only of service. He spurned a kingdom for the sake of friendship. You, he said, will be king, and I will be second to you. This is what truly perfect, stable, and lasting friendship is, a tie that envy cannot spoil, nor suspicion weaken, nor ambition destroy. A friendship so tempted, yielded not an inch, was buffeted but did not collapse. In the face of so many insults, it remained unshaken. Go, therefore, and do likewise. Thank you, Frank Dugan, and thank you, St. Allred. People have asked, who is this St. Allred? Well, Allred was born in Hexham, England in the 12th century. The year was 1110. In his youth, he somehow met another David, soon to be the King of Scotland who became fond of this pious youth, and when David became the king of Scotland, Allred served as his master of the household and in the king's court. But he found life in the royal court lacking what he felt really called to do in life, and so at 24, Allred left Scotland and moved to England. And there he entered the Cistercian Monastery at Riveau in Yorkshire and became abbot there of some 300 monks. Allred was revered for his preaching and for the deeply spiritual life he led. He traveled widely in England and Scotland and was considered a saint in his own lifetime. He was extremely kind to those who approached him for help. He produced a number of exceptional works, including sermons and prayers that are still used to this day. Allred died in 1167 at the age of 57. The text of the treaties you heard today was his own work and can be found in the Liturgy of the Hours Daily Office of Readings. The complete text and Renaissance depictions used in this video can be found at our website www.catholicradiodramas.com Well, that winds up our program for today. Be sure to join us for another episode of Flames of Faith from this new series. Until then... This is Patrick O'Neill closing with your invitation to join us next time. We'll be right here.